Just wanted to cut in before the podcast starts to let you know that the art in the video is fan art for the show Tuca and Birdie. Do you love art? Well, duh. And can you never get enough? Well, have no fear, because Chelsea and Noah are here to talk about art and stuff. Hey, everyone. We have a very special discussion today, and for that, we brought on a very special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Me? Yes, you. <laughs> oh, super. Hi, I'm Miranda. Miranda, are you, uh, <laughs> are you excited to, to talk about titties today? Absolutely. It is one of my favorite subjects. <laughs> Me too. All right. We're all going to, I think this is going to be a very wonderful discussion. Uh, Chelsea, do you want to take it away? Yeah. This is going to be a discussion on boobs in art through history. I took a trip to the Barnes Foundation with a group of students during an internship. And during my trip, I noticed a lot of these paintings had funky looking boobs and it seemed like you know they're mostly anatomically accurate and a lot of paintings were going for some sort of realism but i just felt like the titties didn't quite match like you have these very full-figured women with these small very dome-like titties like they just looked like oranges were glued to their chests and it just didn't make sense to me um the art you're looking at right now is by pierre august renoir who consistently has this sort of style another thing i saw at the barnes foundation is a painting by henry matisse and again it's just anatomically accurate, except the boobs just sort of look like dough balls sitting on her chest. Like there's these harsh lines underneath. And it's just like, is that a stylistic choice? Maybe her boobs just actually looked like that. And I just had so many questions on how they came to be drawn like that, especially the one on the right. It's like defying gravity. It's literally just circle and i know that it's a very minimalist drawing but still like what what do you guys think um well, it's kind of weird too because she doesn't have any nipples yeah she doesn't have any nipples were they gluing oranges on <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks like it does <laughs> i took a trip to the philadelphia museum of art where i saw you know, I had started to take notice of this and would every time I go to an art museum, I would take note and be like, what do the titties look like? Um, uh, I saw some Shunga art. But got lemon titties. Yeah, lemon titties. And like giant penises and vaginas <laughs> aside, her boobs <laughs> are just very minimalist. And this is a lot different than those other paintings but it's still not super anatomically accurate, you know? Yeah, I can, yeah, I can at this that. <laughs> <laughs> just like, Lemon. I mean, I could definitely see this being like a stylistic choice because it's so erotic. It's a very stylized picture. So th in yeah. this instance, it makes a lot more sense to me. Yeah. Um, but let's keep going to the next one we saw. Another Matisse, at the time, I had no idea that these were all by, like, the same two artists, Renoir and Matisse, so I was just like, all these artists do in titties all the same, you know? <laughs> but it, it got me thinking, like, that those are defying gravity, and they just look like half circles. Her left one literally looks like clay, like someone just kind of sculpted a clay boob on yeah. it. Yeah. It looks like a bad boob job. Oh. It does. That insensitive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're all thinking it. I am perfectly okay with talking about anything. I want you guys to like not be shy in this. <laughs> I am very shy. <laughs> <laughs> this is making me blush. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think of when you think of famous art boobs? What, it, am I accurate here in pointing out Venus de Milo and Birth of Venus, or does something else come to your mind? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, I'm right. Oh, yeah. I mean, 
like nudity in like the Renaissance paintings and um Greek statues, like Greco Roman art is like so prevalent. And it's like kind of what set the stage for most of I guess what like I assume Western like, art culture thinks of. Because especially when I was looking into it, when people were doing paintings in like the 19th and 20th century, they would often homages to art from like the Greco-Roman period or the Renaissance period. And that there's that like, especially in the birth of Venus, that particular pose is very, um, you get a lot or like them reclining with them. They're like covering the vagina, and like covering the booth. So it's like sort of modest. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I think of the uh, Virginia state flag, which is modeled after i love the virginia and state flag there is one titty out and one covered so it's a little modest like that yeah even in that one okay so i've noticed that a lot of these were like super freaking manly and i got to thinking i was like were they using male models to draw women and make art for women like look at slide eight like that yeah. It looks like a man. I never thought about that. I just assumed everyone from that period was just very androgynous. Yep. <laughs> this one's interesting because you can see chest, but, yeah. and then it looks like they've literally just applied a breast on top of it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. But I read an article that speculated that Michelangelo used male models and... They were like, yeah, it could have been because of Renaissance modesty, but it also could have just been his stylistic choice because he liked Roman models. Because, like, not Roman, <laughs> he liked male models <laughs> because, you know, his, his statues were sort of Roman-esque and their beauty standard was very muscular. I don't know ripped they were all ripped we'll never know so we don't know if that's true this might just actually be modeled off women it's interesting is that um so the like in the greco-roman period the statues that they would carve they were specifically drawn to that like like athletic build and they would actually calculate the mathematical proportions for like the bodies that they were crafting and so um it's really interesting to see that in um because they primarily used like male figures but they were um they were very interested like they liked that athletic sort of like muscular looking um body and so with like the renaissance paintings it's so similar to that style so it's interesting to see how that bled over the however like 1500 years or so and the renaissance was all about like everything that they did was just kind of bringing back like the greek and roman styles or, like the architecture and the art culture and society and whatever it's really interesting too thinking about this and um learn like learning here and about how women were not permitted on stage so like all female parts were portrayed by men and it's so interesting to see that um expressed like in the fine arts as well i didn't even think about that yeah, it encompassed pretty much everything until it didn't because at some point it must have changed is there did you find a certain time in history when things started getting more anatomically correct yeah i did so if you keep going on slide 10 is a painting from the 1560s Danae receiving the golden rain and that just kind of made me laugh because it's talking about golden rain <laughs> um but <laughs> she looks extremely masculine to me but I think during the Renaissance, so the 1500s is still Renaissance, right? I think. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. So some of them were still like that. But then if you go to slide 11, this picture from 1490 oh. is very feminine. It's a very feminine motherly portrayal of boobs. Like she, she is literally nursing a baby. And... This is the first instance I could find really of like art starting to portray women nursing. Um, and it, it all had to do with, so here's some history. Um, England during the reign of Henry VI, which was from 1420 to 1460, 
he was super conservative and then banned all depictions of breasts and had women like conceal their breasts. But then as the Renaissance went on, the reign changed over to Elizabeth who was like, breasts are totally okay, but the beauty standard was androgynous, which I think goes with that painting I showed you before of Danae receiving the golden reign. Yeah, I, I just thought it was interesting that the whole art, because I guess a lot of the royalty and the rich people were the ones commissioning the art, so they would completely dictate, like, the portrayal of women in art. It's especially interesting to think about is, like, about all my research, I literally only found one female artist. Oh, really? It's, and that wasn't until, like, the 90s. Like the 1990s? 1990s? Yeah. <laughs> we, we've come through a lot of 90s. Well, obviously, like, women were creating art during all these periods, but artists that have been followed in the works that have been, like, maintained and, like, put into, like, the historical context are always been men. So it was really interesting to think about. Art was being made for from and for the men. So it's, like, women being portrayed through a male's eyes as opposed to, like, a, a female's. Yeah, that's very true. And <laughs> yeah, maybe a lot of these men, because I don't know, during the Renaissance, maybe they were like afraid of looking at women or portraying them properly. You know, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to look at the woman as little as possible. <laughs> maybe they were just embarrassed to ask them. Like they didn't want to go out to the market and be like, hey, um, <laughs> I need to learn how to paint some boobs. If you want to come back to my shack, I got a painting studio. I'll give you five sh schmeckles. What are they? <laughs> <laughs> Be like, no, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> so he just asks his homie, Be like, yo, bro, can you tape these oranges to your chest? I heard a lot of the models were prostitutes so maybe it was seen as a low like a lower oh yeah profession yeah and i know painting was a lower profession like painting portraits and stuff was not i mean i'm sure it ebbed and flowed as to like the thoughts on the role of the artist but i know during some time periods it was thought as being a lowly position but if you keep going to slide 12 just a little bit about Shunga art. So this was during the 1600s to mid 1800s. This was like the opposite of conservative. This was so if you go to 13, uh, slide 13, it was like yeah. <laughs> oh my god! This is but I didn't know they were making tentacle porn in like the 1700s. Yeah, holy. Yeah, but it was in Japan. Japan. Always been kinky. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. I love it. I think it's fascinating. But this oh. this portrayal is very like the, the the article I read said like it was supposed to be more realistic. They they added like wrinkles and sags. I mean yeah. it's minimalist, but it's still yeah. give it's it's not like an orange glued to a chest. Like it, yeah. it has physics to it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I love I love this piece not not because it's kinky but just it fascinates I me. I also <laughs> love that she has pubic hair. Do you never see that? Yes, I did notice, and I did want to talk about. I wasn't sure if this would come up, but like a lot of the Western images of naked women leaves out body hair. No, I mean even to this day. The media that we consume, you almost never see a woman with body hair. Very true. Like ever. Yeah, especially not pubic hair. You know, it's sort wow. of becoming fashionable to like not shave your legs or not shave your armpits, but like yeah. you gotta have a clean bikini line. You know? <laughs> it's really interesting how like so much has changed, but that hasn't. Do a lot of these images show any body hair on any of the even the men? I'm I'm trying to No. It's, it's very rare, although you in Greek traditions, it was like m more acceptable to like sculpt body, like pubic hair on a men, but like women, it was always like very smooth and clean. Yeah, and I've noticed that um, yeah, a lot of the, the pubic hair 
it would only feature if it was like a highlight of the picture, you know, like yeah. if, if it was like artists saying, oh, look, it's okay. You know, it wasn't just casually thrown in there. Yeah. The Japanese were on some other stuff. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> it's so funny to look at uh, all of these like semi-modest paintings where they're like kind of covering up and then it's just like Japan's like, <laughs> release the Kraken. It's weird. Like the, the Western art, the nude female is, at least in my experience, never sexualized. But in the Japanese and Western cultured arts I saw, like Indian art, it was almost always sexualized. So it's just very interesting to see the juxtaposition of the two art styles. I found an Instagram called Tits from the Past, and it's just a Instagram page that zooms in and crops where the boobs are for old paintings or new paintings like it, it's almost every time period but i noticed while looking at it that it is overwhelmingly white and i do not fault the owner of this account because when you google um nude women in paintings or nude women in art or boobs in art you have to like scroll pretty far to find any women of color. And I just thought it was interesting that we've broken so many color barriers, but we won't just casually feature women of color's naked bodies. Whereas it's, it's, I mean, it's a problem with all of portraiture and art in general. It's like overwhelmingly white, but, but you find some. I, I had I struggled to find any nude portraiture of people of color. I've seen one, and I'm I'm pretty far. Yeah, I found a few. Um, the earliest that I could find was this dude named Paul Goggin. Goggin? I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he was um, really into like painting the people of Tahiti. He painted some really interesting, like realistic portraits of those women i got a cut in here while editing uh, it's pronounced paul gagan uh we keep butchering it really bad <laughs> galgwin's the dude that what him and van gogh were friends right no way no way that's the dude that might have cut off his ear i guess that would have been around the same time yeah dude they lived together van vincent van gogh and paul galgwin lived together it's fascinating to see how many artists have connected pasts like they all knew each other. I also <laughs> noticed when looking through the page that vast majority of them were like the same type of boob. Um, so he added some links um, that will take you to a website that has like all the different kinds, all the different like variations of boob. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> so I just found that they're all like pretty much the same size like a b to a c maybe smaller but you don't really get any like bell shaped boobs you don't really get any close set boobs you don't really get any conical boobs you don't really get any east west or relaxed or round you get mostly like side set archetypal boob type you know and and i was just thinking like there's so much variation in the real world but all of these were painted pretty much the same and i'm like i don't know again if this is just because the models all had the same type or if it is just the beauty standard yeah i mean even so it, it could be a combination of both they might have hired models specifically because they had those features that's true i'm just i'm very curious and i i am disappointed to say that i could not really find answers to my question. <laughs> and then the next slide 15 is all the different types of nipples. And I know that artists, you don't really like zoom in super close on the nipples, so you can't tell the details to see exactly what type it is, but you hardly ever see the kind that's on the bottom left. You hardly ever uh -huh. see like inverted nipples. 
you know, it, it's sort of like, mm -hmm. there's so much of it. There's so much content when it comes to women's boobs in art, but there's little, there's surprisingly little variation yeah. or they're just completely wrong. Like slide 16, this is probably one of the most famous nude. They are like the most round wide set boobs I have ever seen in my life. Yeah. Really <laughs> weird. Your chest is so like, wide. Yeah. It looks like she's wearing a corset. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she was. <laughs> My thing is, why does the face look so different than the body? Yeah, it's like way more. I don't know if it's way more detailed, but yeah. Or it's like saturated more. Yeah. yeah. This painting is mostly famous for her facial expression, sort of like alluring and looking you directly in the eye. All I reached during this journey was somewhat of a conclusion, and we already touched on this, how there's a lack of variation, and there's a lot of questions to be answered. <laughs> well, I think that's enough for one video, but we'll come back in a few days with our part two of the Boobs in Art History. Thanks for checking us out. Please remember to like and subscribe and give our lovely friend Miranda some love. I just waved, but no one can see. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. This was awesome. Thanks for stopping by. If you still can't get enough, then come back on and join next time to hear more talk about art and stuff. <laughs>